Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to Russ Can't Fly. It's about to go down! <laughs> Okay, so I've already pre flight the plane. I'm like just nervous and excited and nervous and excited. I can't believe I'm actually gonna make this flight. So it's a little noisy out here because there's a jet getting ready to taxi and take off. A lot of stuff happening in that Northeast Philadelphia airport. But the most important thing is I'm gonna fly this Hudson River exclusion and I'm so excited but nervous. You saw that I did that last video talking about the class and all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually going to get in the plane. Man, it's noisy. It's exciting. I'm going to get in the plane. No more talking. Let's get in there and let's make it happen. All right, so I'm in the airplane. I'm ready to make this happen. So I'm going to get this engine started so we can get on out of here. Um, the one thing that I had to be mindful of is there's a TFR that's starting at 2.30. Um, so it's 12, 15 or so. That's why I got to get this engine started and get there, fly this quarter and get back. I don't want to be rushing, but I need to be mindful of this TFR. I think it's at the Met Stadium. University of Pittsburgh is playing my alma mater, Syracuse, believe it or not. Uh, so it's just kind of, it's just kind of crazy. University of Pittsburgh is playing Syracuse. So anyway, um, I'm going to get this engine started and uh, we're going to let it do what it do. Clear prop. So as I taxi out, unfortunately, as GoPros are notorious for being unreliable, um, my forward facing GoPro that you see out the front right there um, that faces forward um, decided that it wasn't going to work and I didn't realize that it wasn't working. And so on this most exciting flight, that I've taken, you know, this year, along with my flight to um, Martha's Vineyard, it decided that it wasn't gonna capture any sound. So unfortunately, you're gonna hear a lot of narration from me because I absolutely refuse not to post this flight just because it was such an amazing flight. So unfortunately, you're gonna hear a bunch of narration, which I absolutely don't like, but what can you do? Gotta make lemons, or what is it? Lemonade from lemons. All right, so let's let's get to it. All right, so I'm turning to line up to take off, and I am so excited about this flight. I just wish my cameras were working, but I am literally flying to the Statue of Liberty and points beyond, and I can't believe it. So let's just watch this take off, and from there, we'll get right to it. It was such a beautiful flight. After a very scenic flight, I'm now entering into the Sandy Hook Bay. I will then go into the lower bay and then towards the Statue of Liberty and into the Hudson River Corridor. I gotta tell you, I am so upset that that forward facing camera isn't working, but at least you can see some of the beauty of the Sandy Hook Bay in the lower bay that feeds into the Hudson River. Oh man, these cameras just don't do it justice, but it's just amazing. But the next thing is the Statue of Liberty and then into the bridges, just amazing. So I never like blank spaces in videos because when I'm watching them, I, I realize that it's boring but I am just gonna let this flight play out as I go from the Verrazano Bridge, which is the first waypoint, so you can just watch. The only camera angle that I have that will show the flight is the overhead camera back behind me uh, because the forward facing doesn't work northbound. It does work southbound, but I just wanna let this play because I, I you know, it's, 
it was just amazing for me and unfortunately this camera doesn't do it justice but i just wanted to share this major milestone with you all so please bear with just music and no commentary Now again, I hate to do this voiceover, but I'm just gonna let this play. I hope you don't <laughs> walk away from this video, but this, I mean, this flight is just amazing. So just look, you got Manhattan off to the right and New Jersey off to the left. So let's just let it play.
So as I make my turn to go from north to south on the Hudson River corridor, um, my camera decided it finally wanted to wake up. So I'll just go through a couple of the waypoints that, you know, so you can hear some of the calls and then we'll get down to the end. Um, I won't bore you with the entire southern portion of the trip. Um, and again, I'm sorry for the lack of any type of voicing, but I tried to at least do some waypoints. Just so you know that there was a final waypoint called Tower. Um, that was the sixth waypoint um, before I was able to make this turn. And so now I'm heading back south. And would you know it, the camera decided to wake up. Hudson River Traffic Warrior, GW Bridge, 1100 southbound. All right, so next one is Clock on oh, Intrepid. I should be able to see it this time because I think it's off to my left. left Alright, so I'm looking for the Intrepid, which is next. That's just so crazy that I get to do this. Alright, there's the Intrepid. There's the light sport. Goodness. Helicopter. Hudson River traffic. Warrior. 1,100 feet. Intrepid. Southbound. Alright, so after Intrepid. Is clock. Hudson traffic, orange sky on inbound for the stock delivery. We'll be circling at 900, heading south. Hudson. All right, so I'm not going to circle this time because you can circle the statue. I'm not going to do that just because the weather squirrely. This is the first time I'm doing it and I'm by myself navigating, flying, and <laughs> fighting some pretty weird wind. And so I want to just kind of stay in my lane here a little bit. And I tell you one thing, it's one thing to be in class doing this. is another thing to be up here actually flying this thing. Crazy. And there's the Liberty. <sighs> and look at that. It might be hard with the sun, but man, crazy. And there's the Statue of Liberty, man. <laughs> crazy. Hudson Traffic Warriors, Statue of Liberty, 1000 southbound. That's crazy. All right, focus. That's crazy. Okay, I see somebody. All right, so. Five hundred clockwise. So, dude, was five hundred. Statue, we're climbing, turning, switching. There's some people. Oh, they're doing. That's the helicopters down there. So when you hear those people talking, those are helicopters in there. Forty-four o'clock, south descending to the statue. Back to the statue, 500 climbing wall, uh, 1,000, of course, we're Yeah, so here you hear all that talking about the statue. So those are all those helicopters that are doing like sightseeing tours. And they're for themselves, it's the lady, 500. Or the lady, that's all of them. So that's why I didn't want to get into that mix. This is my first time, I'm a neophyte, you know. I still can't believe I actually Long did Ranger, this. Whew, wait, get some air real quick. Oh, I can't. It's sucking it in. All right, this is my last reporting point up here. R44 back to the statue, 700, counterclockwise. DZ Bridge. All right, my last reporting point. I did it, y'all. Oh, I am sweat. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Got to make sure I'm staying on my altitudes. Hudson traffic, warrior, DZ Bridge. 1,100, last call, Hudson River. Orange Freedom Tower, 1,000 more. Hour 44, back in statue, southbound, switch to Newark. All right, and hey, we're out. All right, so I still have to be mindful of this class Bravo for now. All right, we're on our way back to the Northeast, so we can take these kneeboard things off for now. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. That was off the chain. All right, out of that Bravo shelf. Not completely out of the Bravo, but different shelf. I can climb up to, let's climb up to 2,000 or 2,500. Oh my goodness. So that was a trip and a half. So now I'm just making my way back to Northeast Airport. Put this baby on the ground. And consider this a flight to remember and definitely 
beyond the TFR time. And so everything was perfectly legal. Now I will say the difficulty that I had was uniform runway three three six the option. Being able to see what was happening. You know what I mean? Like I didn't see the clock. I just saw where it was on fourth flight. And then fourth flight was really acting up because it was like obstacle, obstacle, obstacle. And I it mean it's doing its job, but it's like, yes, I know, I'm flying lower than buildings. Which is kind of nuts, uh, but that that was part of the, you know, the thing. So even though I was flying in a place where there was danger, it was planned. I put myself there specifically for a purpose. And so this equipment doesn't understand that there was a purpose behind what was happening. All it knew was you're in danger. You're in a place where you should not be. And it's like, okay, well, according to you, equipment, yes, you're right. I shouldn't be here, but I put myself here for a specific purpose. And although there is danger, I'm not in danger. And so it all worked out. And I, I got to tell you, it's a lot of work. So I had invited my brother Anderson to come fly with me. But unfortunately, you know, he's, you know, he's a family man, so he's got commitments. I told him this won't be the last time I'm doing it. So it would have been a little easier to have another pair of eyes and all that kind of stuff because it was his act. But the good news is, good Lord saw fit to keep me safe. I planned halfway decently. That FAA fast program, wings class, I mean, just, they knocked it out of the park. They made everything that happened there predictable and so i will tell you that if there's something that you want to do aviation wise just take one of those fast program classes and they will put you in good stead the thing that was really interesting too is they even talked about tfrs and it came up that yeah if there's a tfr it's a tfr it doesn't matter that there's an exclusion don't want to go through that. Now, of course, if you're flying into those airports and you're on a um, IFR flight plan, there's clearances that happen, and I'm sure you're given a squawk code and all of that kind of stuff. But you're just squawking 1200 flying VFR, and you fly through that TFR, that's not going to end well for you. Not going to be a good day. But, man. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Oh my gosh. The things you can do when you just push yourself a little bit. So this has just been one challenging but satisfying flight. It's been amazing. And you can see I'm a lot more relaxed now. I'm actually sitting back the whole time. I was like, you know, you remember those kids when they first learned to drive? And they're like this, <laughs> you know, both hands on the wheel, their face is almost plastered to the dashboard. I'm not gonna lie, I felt like a kid. Just at low altitude, 1,000 feet above the river, 1,100, wind kicking around off of those buildings. That's definitely a flight that I would have to do where I, if I take my wife, I have to do it with uh, in a situation where the wet, you know, the wind isn't as bad because those winds are rarely swirly. It was a lot. And I have the plane until four. Uh, site, we'll extend that up one But I'm exhausted. <laughs> I would do some more flying, but that that took it out of me. You know, that, that took it out of me. Hey, Trenton. Trenton, Trenton. What's up, Trenton? Northeast Tower, Warrior 2549 in Quebec, 11 miles northeast of the field, inbound for full stop landing. If information echo. Cherokee 2549 in Quebec, Northeast Tower, enter right downwind, runway 33. Right downwind, runway 33, 49 in Quebec. Cherokee 49 in Quebec, report midfield, right downwind. Report midfield, right downwind for 49 in Quebec. Cherokee 49 in Quebec, traffic 11 o'clock, 3 miles in the downwind lands. Altitude indicates 700, do you have in sight? Looking for traffic, 49 Quebec. Cherokee, 49 Quebec, turn left 10 degrees. 
Left 10 degrees, 49 Quebec. Cherokee, 49 Quebec, continue on that heading and I'll call your turn inbound for the base. Continue this heading, you'll call my turn in for the base for 49 Quebec. Cherokee, 49 Quebec, turn right and join a four mile right base, runway 33. Right for right base for 49 Quebec for runway 33. They traffic in front of me there. Cherokee 49 Quebec, follow the lance at your 12 o'clock and two miles on final. Runway 33, clear to land number four. Clear to land number four, follow the Cherokee in front of me. That traffic is in sight. 49 Quebec, runway 33, clear to land. Well, it goes without saying, this has been one heck of a flight. And so, man, let's go ahead and get this baby on the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh y'all off the chain that was one heck of a flight I gotta tell you I've had some amazing experiences this year and that this just caps off the year my next flights will pretty be pretty much mundane and routine which is okay um, there's something to be said for mundane and routine uh, that was everything but, and I am flight pilot wasted. <laughs> I am tired. I don't even feel like getting out of this airplane. My gosh. All right. So I just want to thank you all for being on this journey with me. One of the things that I am definitely thankful for is all of you. You've made this journey incredible. And I just really can't thank you all enough for just taking precious time out of your life to watch these videos, send me words of encouragement, all kinds of wise advice. It's all welcome. Um, and you know, I like receiving correction. I'm still a relatively low time pilot. And so there's still, I have a lot to learn. That flight right there, that was definitely pushing the envelope. And I wanna thank the FAA FAST team and the WINGS program and all those folks who put on that training at Reading Airport. You guys made this flight possible and I thank you. So with that, I've blathered on long enough and uh, whew, gotta get myself together here. So thank you for flying with me. Russ Kid, Russ Kid, fly him out! Peace.